Hey, this is Dave from HouseBarons.com. Today we're looking at the continued renovation of our 120 year old house. And we're gonna take on the controversial topic of how to insulate the house in the correct manner. It may seem obvious, you just stick insulation in the walls and call it good, but that's a recipe for disaster. Knowing how to insulate uh, an old house starts with understanding of how it was constructed. Uh, back in the old days, 100 years ago, pre-World War II, you had houses built with empty wall cavities and there was no real concern for energy efficiency as the house was heated with whatever it was heated with. Uh, if there was any moisture in the wall cavities, uh, the heating of the house would take care of gradually drying that out as the house breathed. When we put insulation in there, now the house can't breathe the way it used to and the insulation becomes the holder of moisture. And when moisture and wood stay in contact for extended periods of time, you get a disaster like this. Well, our inspection report said that there was some kind of water damage in the bathroom on the main level. So we started taking the drywall off and we found more than a little bit of damage. Uh, we determined that water had been leaking in through a gutter leak uh, from the exterior and it was running straight down there between two studs and it came right in through that hole and this had to be going on probably for years and so much water had come in it's actually rotted away this entire stud to the point of it's vanished and the water damage continued down in this whole cavity and we're having to sister three of these joists in order to make this repair you know what looked like it was going to be kind of a just a small project has turned into a pretty big project. And so that's what we don't want to have happen in this house. And so we spent a lot of time studying this and you can get further information at Oak Ridge Laboratory in Tennessee where they do a lot of insulation studies. For the purpose of an old house, you have to be careful about the wall cavity and what you're doing to that area that used to be allowed to breathe. As you look at these walls, you can see evidence of staining from the outside where water has gotten in and just run down these walls. And that's part of the breathing that the house did. Back in those days, it wasn't that important that the house be airtight. They just relied on the heating of the house to breathe into these wall cavities and gradually dry them out. And, and that was, it worked. And for, while, so long as these wall cavities have been empty for 120 years, in spite of the staining, these boards are rock solid. The problem is, is when water stays in contact with the wood. And that's what happens when you just throw insulation in to a house that is not sealed, that's not air, air or water tight. If you've ever seen an old house that has the original clapboard siding on it, you, sometimes you can look at them and you'll see like what looks like plugs, about two inch diameter holes that were drilled into the side of the house. And what that was used for was to pump insulation behind those walls from the outside. That at times can be an absolute disaster. It's not hard to see right in this area right here. You can see the gaps right down in there that show that this house is not at all airtight. There's no flashing around these windows. And it's not just at the bottom of the windows, but even as you go up high on this one, you can see daylight there around the edges of the, the trim. That's fairly typical of an old house. The problem is if you stick insulation in there, water can get in there and typical insulation will hold the water. And when that can't dry out because of the passage of air is no longer allowed to flow through the cavities, you end up with a problem of rotting wood. We finally came to the conclusion that if you're gonna do it right, you have to take care of the wall cavities by putting insulation in and then protecting those wall cavities with the insulation in them by keeping all water out. On the interior, when we put it, we've got this uh, R13 craft paper insulation. This is a vapor barrier for the inside of the house. We have a water and vapor barrier on the outside of the house. And that whole goal then is to make sure that these cavities, once full of insulation, will stay dry. We're making sure that we're putting all new siding on the outside, all new windows, so it's gonna, those windows and doors will all be reflashed. And it's a big job, 
but to do it right, you want to make sure that there's no way water's going to get in. So we're really treating this house as if it were new construction. If you're buying a house or you're renovating a house like this, you need to know what's in those wall cavities and how it was done. Let's say you have an old house and you don't want to reside the whole house or put all new windows in. Yeah, everything I've read says then don't insulate the wall cavities. Just pay higher heat bills simply because if that insulation in the wall, especially if it's cellulose or fiberglass, if that ever gets wet, it won't dry out. It'll just rot the, wind, rot the walls from the inside out. So it's a pretty big deal when you're considering what to do with insulation in an old house. Don't take our word for it. Do your research and, and make sure that you have a full understanding of all the pros and cons because it's easy to go wrong when you're insulating in an old house. There are many challenges to insulating an old house, so be sure and do your research uh, so that you're fully aware of what the pros and cons are when, you're, when you go about this process. Hope this video helps. If you got anything out of it, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Be sure and subscribe. We've got lots more videos coming. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.